Welcome to Leading the Way, a video series about addressing challenges in biomarker testing. Today, you will hear important insights about biomarker testing standardization in advanced ovarian cancer from Dr. Michelle Schiller, a molecular pathologist at a major academic institution. Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Schiller, and I would like to share some helpful tips on how you can standardize biomarker testing. I have spearheaded improvements in several biomarker testing processes within my healthcare system. I did this because while attending tumor boards, I realized that we often did not know which patients had been tested. Testing is a vital part of care, and without this information, we would not be able to make the most informed decisions for our patients. We wanted to ensure that everyone received the same high standard of care. So it became clear to me that we needed a better approach. Today, I would like to share my experiences with you. I will discuss the challenges we faced, the approaches we took, and the results of those efforts. In Chapter 1, I'll discuss how to build relationships and provide educational support to your colleagues. In Chapter 2, I'll talk about how to build a consensus that there is a need for a standard approach. Lastly, in Chapter 3, I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process for creating that standard approach. My hope is that my story will inspire you to begin your own testing standardization efforts. Importantly, leading such an effort doesn't require extensive molecular pathology experience, but simply an investment of time and effort. So let's jump in. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I use to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, also referred to as HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. First, let's discuss how building relationships and providing educational support to the clinical team was critical to our success. One major issue was that our clinical team was overwhelmed with the amount of information they needed to learn about biomarker testing. Our team was focused on their patients, and they did not have time to keep up with the latest developments in testing. In the era of biomarker-driven therapy, biomarker status is extremely important for making informed treatment decisions. There was a need for someone to step in to provide leadership and educational support to the clinical team in order to continue to provide the best care possible for our patients. To lead this charge, I needed to develop strong relationships with the clinical team. So, I attended as many tumor board meetings as I could, and I took the time to really listen to my colleagues. By listening to the struggles they were working to overcome, I began to understand the needs of the multidisciplinary team. I also became more aware of the fact that I had information that could potentially help. Next, I began to speak up and share pertinent information based on my expertise in molecular pathology. I also let them know that I would be available to answer any of their questions, and when they called, I answered. If I didn't have the answer at that moment, I let them know that I would research the question and get back to them. These collaborations with my colleagues helped me understand their perspectives and allowed me to show them that I could be a valuable resource. This put me in the position to become a biomarker testing champion. What does that mean? It means being willing to stay up to date on the latest research, guideline recommendations, U.S. Food and Drug Administration approvals, and commercial laboratory capabilities. It means I believe testing empowers providers and patients to make informed decisions. As a result, I shared this information with my colleagues through many educational efforts, which included training, formal presentations, distributing articles, and proactive follow-up with department leaders. We had many discussions about how to move forward, and in order to adapt to the continually changing landscape, I follow up with the team regularly. When thinking about this role, you do not have to be someone with extensive training in molecular pathology. Any member of the team who is motivated and available to fill this role can take it on. I was able to earn my colleagues' trust because I took the time to understand their needs and challenges with respect to testing. This allowed me to strengthen our relationship so that I could drive change as a testing champion. Our multidisciplinary team was overwhelmed by the fast pace of the developments in biomarker testing. 
As such, I provided educational support that helped relieve the burden of keeping up with testing. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I use to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, also referred to as HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. The purpose of this chapter is to share how we reached a consensus that there was a need to improve our approach to HRD testing in advanced ovarian cancer. It has always been our clinical team's goal to test all appropriate patients for homologous recombination deficiency. However, in reality, we were not testing everyone who needed to be tested. In collaboration with my surgical pathology colleagues, we were able to count the number of patients eligible for testing versus those who had undergone testing. These data were eye-opening for the clinical providers and helped them to align on the need to standardize our approach to homologous recombination deficiency testing in ovarian cancer. My strategy was to focus on education rather than persuasion. First, I shared our current biomarker testing rates across the institution. This helped illustrate to the team that a large number of patients were being missed and motivated them to change our approach. Second, I found that it was productive to provide key decision makers with evidence-based guidance around biomarker testing as the standard of care. Finally, I had to consider the unique role that pathologists play in biomarker testing. Pathologists may be seen as having institutional biases or preferences around testing services, so it is important to remain neutral and objective. As pathologists, we provided information and let the clinical team make the decisions around the testing preferences that would be best for their patients. Initially, everyone did not agree on the need to change our approach. To drive consensus, we shared objective evidence across the institution, including our current testing rates and evidence-based guidance around testing. This helped the team see the need for themselves and motivated them to change our approach. With this consensus in place, our team began developing a standard protocol for testing. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I use to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, also referred to as HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. Here, I will share the step-by-step -step process we use to develop a standard protocol for testing. Our team agreed that our current approach was not adequate to ensure that all appropriate patients were tested. A standardized approach, including choices around whom to test, and what assay or assays to use could help us fix this problem. But we needed to align on what approach would be best for patients at our institution. We followed a step-by-step -step approach to develop reflexive orders, which are standing orders for biomarker testing based on the preferences of the clinical team. First, I sent an invitation to the multidisciplinary team that announced the topic, along with reference materials that could be reviewed before the meeting. Next, during the meeting, I summarized all relevant clinical data and guideline recommendations. We also discussed lab capabilities, specific assays, and costs. The team also considered access to these tests and how efficiently they could be performed. Then, I opened the floor for questions. When the conversation indicated that a decision needed to be made, I asked the team to vote on who should be tested and what assays should be used. All voting was anonymous, and the pathology team abstained from voting. I drafted a standing reflexive order based on the consensus reached by the clinical team and shared the result with the team for review. The final order reflecting the desires of the clinical team was then submitted to the administration for approval and implementation. Once this new standardized approach was in place, we were able to test more patients and could better tailor our therapeutic approach to match each patient's disease. Treating physicians expressed greater satisfaction in their work and pathologists enjoyed having clear processes and protocols. Our goal is that all patients receive the same high standard of care. We realized that some patients with advanced ovarian cancer were not being tested for homologous recombination deficiency. The best way to ensure that all patients were being tested appropriately 
was to create a standard approach to testing throughout our institution. To accomplish that goal, we had to overcome three challenges. First, the team felt overwhelmed by the amount of information they needed to learn about biomarker testing. By educating the team, I was able to gain their trust and relieve that burden. Second, not everyone agreed that testing was a problem. By sharing our biomarker testing rates and evidence-based guidance around biomarker testing, we were able to form a consensus on the need to standardize our approach. Third, we needed to agree on our new approach. To do that, I presented information around different assays and processes to the team in an objective fashion and let them decide on a protocol that would work best. With this new approach in place, we are now able to test more appropriate patients and our providers have expressed greater satisfaction in their work. I hope you found my experiences useful and I encourage you to move forward with your own biomarker testing standardization efforts. Thank you for your time.